Chapter 37, The Squirrel A small squirrel was scurrying through the garden. Bright Bill had never seen her before. He peered out from the nest and watched her bounce across the lawn. After a minute of spying, the gosling shook his tail feathers and waddled outside. Hello, my name is Bright Bill. The squirrel froze. Then she slowly turned around. And then she started to talk. Hi, Bright Bill. My name is Chit Chat, and I'm a 12 and a half week old squirrel, and I'm new around here, and your home is really big and round, and I don't understand why smoke sometimes comes out of it. Reader, I'm not quite sure how Chit Chat got enough air into her lungs to go on like that. And I'm not quite sure how Bright Bill had the patience to listen. But he stood there and politely nodded as, as Chit Chat rambled on and on and on. And sometimes I see you waddling behind your funny looking mother, and you seem so nice that I thought I'd come down and introduce myself. But now I'm nervous, and I'm talking too much, and my name is Chit Chat. I think I said that already. There was a pleasant silence. Bright Bill stood on one foot for a moment. Then the gosling took a deep breath and said, It's very nice to meet you, Chit Chat. I don't think you talk too much. I think you talk just enough. And I like you, so let's be friends. A big smile appeared on the squirrel's tiny face. For once, Chit Chat was speechless. Chapter 38, The New Friendship Chit Chat wasn't speechless for long. She'd already been alive for a whole twelve and a half weeks, and she wanted to tell Bright Bill about every exciting thing and every boring thing that had ever happened to her. And so, as the new friends played and explored and ate together, the squirrel shared her stories. I was born on the other side of the hill, and then last week I decided I was ready to build my first dray, which is what you call a squirrel nest. And now I live in that tree with the weird bump in its trunk, she said, while the two of them kicked pebbles into the pond. One time, a weasel chased me through the treetops until he missed a branch and fell all the way down and crashed into a bush and walked away all wobbly, and he never bothered me again, she said, while the two of them crawled through a hollow log. Ew, gross. I saw you eat that ant one time. I ate a gnat by accident, and I didn't like it at all. I mostly eat acorns and bark and tree buds, and sometimes the yummy berries that grow in your garden, she said while the two of them took a snack break. But Chit Chat was, a good, was as good a listener as she was a talker, and whenever it was Bright Bill's turn to speak, she'd keep quiet and hang on his every word. Do you know who enjoyed their conversations most of all? Our robot Roz. The protective mother was never far away, and she felt something like amusement at the silly conversation she overheard, and she felt something like happiness that her son had made such a good friend. Chapter 39, The First Flight Bright Bull had spent his entire life by the pond, and he was becoming very curious about what lay beyond his neighborhood. So one day his mother said to him, Let us go for a walk, and I will show you more water than you can possibly imagine. Roz placed a gosling on her flat shoulder, and the two of them set off across the island. They marched out of the forest, crossed the great meadow, and climbed uphill until they were at the top of the island's western ridge. Before them was a grassy slope that descended all the way to the dark, choppy waves that surrounded the island. That is a lot of water, said the wide-eyed gosling. I'm a good swimmer, but I'm not good enough to swim across that pond. That is not a pond, said the robot. That is an ocean. I doubt any bird could swim across an ocean. Waves rolled in from the horizon. Seagulls circled above the shore. A steady breeze blew up the slope. Bright Bill's yellow fluff had recently changed over to a coat of silky brown feathers, and he spread his feathery wings into the breeze. And then, Mama, look! For the briefest of moments, the wind lifted Bright Bill off the ground, but he quickly tipped backward and thumped into the soft grass. I was flying, he squeaked. That was not flying, said Roz, looking back at her son upside down. Well, I was almost flying. I'm going to try again. I have observed, observed many birds in flight, said Roz. Sometimes they flap their wings quickly, and other times they fly without flapping at all. They spread their wings and soar on the wind. So I was soaring, said Bright Bill. Almost. Look at that soaring eagle. Soaring seagull. It seems like she is not doing anything. But if you look closer, you will notice that she is making small adjustments with her wings and tail. I think you should try adjusting your wings in the wind, like her. Bright Bill hopped onto a rock and opened his wings wide. The wind is pushing me backward. Change the angle of your wings, said his mother. Let us see what happens when they slice through the air. Bright Bill slowly angled his wings downward. The more he turned them, the less the wind pushed him backward. And just as his wings leveled off, Mama, look, he squeaked as his feet left the ground. I'm soaring, I'm soaring. He hovered there for a second, rising a little higher than before, and then he sailed backward into the soft grass again. The gosling kept hopping onto the rock and kept riding the wind and kept tumbling into the grass, until he started to find his wings. 
With each attempt, he floated a little higher and a little longer, and finally, Bright Bill really did soar. He lifted high into the air and hung there, floating. He turned his wings down and felt himself drop. He wiggled his tail feathers and felt himself veering back and forth. I'm a natural, he squeaked. You are doing very well, said Roz, but you need to keep practicing. And so they spent the afternoon practicing up on the ridge. Once Bright Bill was comfortable soaring, he tried flapping his wings. He flapped high into the air. He flapped in straight lines. He flapped around and around in circles. A big smile appeared on the gosling's face. Clearly, Bright Bill was designed to fly. I'm flying, Mama. I'm really flying. You are flying, said the robot. Very good. Bright Bill was now a real flyer, but all that flying had worn him out. He lowered himself toward the ground and tumbled into the grass one last time. His landing still needed some work. Ross placed Bright Bill on her shoulder and headed back to the nest. I can't believe I can fly now, Mama, said Bright Bill in a sleepy voice. I just wish, I just wish you could fly with me. And then the gosling's words were replaced by his quiet, steady breathing. Chapter 40, The Ship Bright Bill was a flying fanatic, and his favorite place to fly was up on the grassy ridge. The robot and the gosling liked to spend afternoons up there, working on the finer points of flying. And it was on one such afternoon that they noticed something mysterious far out at sea. Bright Bill spiraled down to his mother, flopped onto the grass, and pointed to the horizon. Mama, what is that thing? Roz's computer brain found the right word. That is a ship. What's a ship? A ship is a large vessel used for ocean transport. Bright Bill's face scrunched up with confusion. Used by who? I do not know. It was the first ship either of them had ever laid eyes on. From that distance, it looked as though it were moving slowly, but it was actually racing through the waves. From that distance, it looked as though it were small, but it was actually one of the largest ships ever built. The robot and the gosling watched it crawl across the ocean until it finally disappeared to the south. Where had the ship come from? Where was it going? Who was on board? Ros and Brightbill had many questions, but no answers.